Good morning. Welcome to Friday. It is Good Friday, or better yet, it is Holy Friday for all the events that take place today. We're going to be finishing out in this in this devotion this morning. We're going to be finishing out Luke chapter 22. Sometimes I forget how long Luke 22 is. Uh, we did the first half of it yesterday, and there was so much that took place there. We're going to be doing the second half of, of that today. And then also we're going to go into Luke chapter 23. And this takes us from Jesus' arrest through to his burial and all of the different events and things that are taking place uh, through, uh, through all of that space. And what's notable in all of this is something that, uh, that I think is very fascinating at all, uh, through all of this, are the number of people that are passing the buck. No one here wants to make a big decision. They, uh, you know, and I, I say that, and then that, you know, obviously none of them have met Harry Truman yet. Uh, because they're all very good at, at passing this around. They, they're, uh, to, to their credit, they, they, can, uh, they can set things up, they can organize things, they can put it all together, they can, they can set up the situation that they want, but the trouble is none of them want to be the ones to actually make the decision on what's going to really actually happen to Jesus. They know what they want to have happen, they're setting all of that up, but they don't want to be the ones to actually make the decision. Now, to Pilate's credit in this, he at least acknowledges that this is a thing. That no one's wanting to make a decision, a decision that he doesn't want to make a decision. He washes his hands of the whole thing uh, and, and seems to give the crowd the decision and all of this. But that in and of itself, when you're a leader, even a non-decision is a decision that you're making. Pilate is responsible here, um, but he is at least more open about what it is that's going on than the others are. But for political reasons, he is going to have Jesus killed because he just, quite frankly, he doesn't care. He doesn't care what happens, Jesus or Barabbas or whatever, whichever one he doesn't care, he's gonna make sure the crowds are placated, that they're going to get what they want. He's gonna make that political decision, even if he sees nothing wrong with Jesus. That's not what he cares about. Um, but there are some outliers in this story. Some folks who aren't passing the buck, some folks who really um, don't have either any power to make a decision or actually are doing something. And I call them the outliers because this is, they are unusual in, in so far as the Holy Week story is taking shape. Uh, and the first one is Simon of Cyrene. Remember, Simon is the one as Jesus is being marched through Jerusalem uh, on his way uh, to, the, to the cross. Uh, Siren, Simon is the one who, when Jesus can't carry it anymore, is, uh, is drafted by the Roman soldiers to pick up Jesus' cross. And it was probably just the, the horizontal piece of, of the cross. He's drafted by, uh, by Simon to carry that piece the rest, uh, or they're drafted by the Romans to carry that piece the rest of the way to where Jesus is going to be crucified. Uh, so Simon is not really have a choice in there, but he is, uh, he is told to do something. The others are the group, uh, the group of people that are wailing and crying as Jesus is leaving the city. Uh, these are folks that were either genuinely sorry for what had happened or probably more likely are folks that that was literally their job when these things happen. Uh, you know, it used to be a profession to be a professional whaler. Not whaler as in someone who goes and, and hunts down whales. Uh, you know, there's no Captain Ahabs here. But folks who would go and cry and show, and show distress for those who are going to die. They wouldn't have had much choice in this either. That would have just been their job. Uh, either that was their job that they, were, that they were supposed to do or they were reacting to events that were around them that they had no control over. Uh, and so they're another part of this story that are outliers in this. They're not passing the buck, but neither do they have a whole lot of choice in what's taking place. The true different one in all of this that we see is uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph was different. We even see that in the way that he is described as, as we see him. Uh, Jesus has been crucified at this point when Joseph comes into the story. Uh, he is dead 
And Joseph goes and he says, let me have Jesus' body so I can bury him. And Joseph is described as being a righteous man. He is one of the leaders, but he is different than the others. He is taking responsibility. He has power and authority to do something and he is doing it. He's saying, I can do this. He's not going to pass it on to anyone else. He is actually making a decision. And so he goes and he pulls Jesus' body down and he buries, he is the one who buries Jesus. Um, he didn't agree with what it was that was taking place. Uh, so what happens with all of this? There are always some that have very little choice. And that's something we have to remember, uh, especially in our society today, because we, we have built up, especially in American society, we have built up this myth that everyone has a choice. Everyone always choose to make their lives better and that if they don't, well, they're just not a hard worker, they're just lazy or whatever the deal is. There are always going to be people who have no choice in what they do. Whether, you know, however it has happened, sometimes through their own decisions, sometimes through the decisions of others, they find themselves in a place where they can't make any choices. They are always reacting or they are always just doing because that's what happens. Whether they want to or not, they have no choice in the matter, so they have to do. Someone like Simon, someone like the Whalers. Um, then you have others that um, are... Uh, oh, I forgot one of them also that really didn't have a choice in all of this, even though his, his actions led him here. Uh, but you have the criminal on Jesus' side. He, uh, he had kind of a choice. I mean, he was dying there. He could have cursed Jesus. Uh, he could have uh, spat on Jesus. He could have just, you know, I thought Jesus was not anything like the other did. But uh, one of them showed at least a modicum of faith in there. Use what little choice he had in that moment to, uh, to take a risk, to take a chance that maybe Jesus is the one who he says. But even he is still a lot of an outlier because he didn't have much choice in what he was doing. His choices came long before this that landed him where, probably landed him where, it, where he was in that moment. Uh, so you have some that are always have a little choice, have no choice, or uh, who have maybe some choice, but their actions have dictated that at a certain point they lose the ability to be able to do anything. But some can choose. Some have actual power and authority and to do something. And then we have to look to them to see what do they do. Do they pass the buck on like some have, or are they like Joseph of Arimathea? who say, I can do something important. I can make a choice. I can do. The buck won't pass me by this time, but I can reach out and do it. Easter on Good Friday serves two purposes. One, it gives us hope when we have no choice, that there will be a day that comes when things will be different. Um, But it also, uh, on the other side of that, it grounds us so that we can do the right thing, so that we can make the right choice when we have the power to do so. Saying that we can be grounded in that, knowing that even if we are taking a risk, even if we are taking a chance, even uh, if we are going to be stepping up against others who would argue vehemently against us, that because of Easter, we have the power and the ability to stand there and to make that choice. And in fact, we are called to do so because of Easter. My question for us today is, where are you right now in the middle of this? Are you in a place where you have a choice that you can make? Or are you in a place where you don't really have any choices, but you just have to do? Because that's where we find ourselves right now. And for how many of us are we, are we both? Do we feel like we have some choices we can make, but others where we don't have any? And what does that mean? Um, the question I want, to, I want us to focus on today is how is God leading us even in this moment? Even when we find ourselves in this place, how is God leading us through? I hope you have a good rest of your Friday. And then uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning for one shorter, uh, one last shorter devotion this week. Go in peace. Amen.